Well, hello everyone. It's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys another reading. So today's topic is who can't get you off of their mind. So we're just going to have a little fun today and dive into a person that is heavily thinking about you. And we're going to see, you know, why you are on this person's mind. We're also going to dive deeper into everything as well over on the extended. So about halfway through, we'll go ahead and switch on over. I'll put all the information that uh, for that video, as well as these organites and all the decks I'll be using here in the description box down below. So you guys, let Let's just go ahead and have fun with this reading today, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to first look at the details of this person. We're going to go into a bunch of different things that could identify them. Now, some things might not um, be clicking and others might. So just take what does and leave what doesn't. So we're going to go into this bowl of names here. Obviously, I can't have every single name in the world, but I am oop, working on it. We've got Robert. So Bob, Robert, um, Robbie. Uh, Bobby, something like that could be there, or just like Rob. So this right here could be somebody that's also connected to your person. Let's just say your person um, has a brother named Robert or, or like a best friend named Robert. That could be it as well. All right, so let's continue. What else do we need to know? There could be names that you guys see. See Mason here? Maybe I don't pick it, but that could be a sign as well. All right. Ooh, there's two in this one. We've got Wesley, so Wes or Wesley, and we have Brad. So immediately, of course, you know, I mean, famous people are coming through. Wesley Snipe is coming through for me. Brad Pitt and Rob Lowe or Robert Pattinson are coming through. So those could all be, you know, Robert De Niro. I mean, gosh, how many guys out there are named Robert, right? So anyways, the list is endless. So let's go ahead and continue. We have Quinn. Okay, so um, Harley Quinn is coming through. Uh, Quinn, um, this is like a you know unisex name. This could be like a um, you know a girl, guy, whatever. Um, but I'm getting um, who was I getting here? Uh, so, no, I was thinking Quaid for some reason. Quaid and the movie Total Recall. I don't know why that's coming through to me with this, but that's what is. Let's continue. And hey, this flute is really loud. So let's turn that down. Okay. All right. Ralph. You know what's so funny? I almost said the Brat Pack. I know that right now, and, and the reason I'm saying that is because I see the name Andrew fly, flying around, so it reminds me of Andrew McCarthy, which is somebody that has just done, I think the document docu-series might be out by now, or it's like a documentary, um, and basically he's going with the, the Brack Pat and or the, yeah, the Brack Pat from the 80s. And, um, you know, Ralph Macchio may, may have been in that rat, that Brat Pack. Um, you know, uh, Rob Lowe was in the Brat Pack. Um, so, yeah, there's for some reason that's coming through as well. But Ralph Macchio. Karate Kid, you know? Somebody might be in karate. We have Pedro. San Pedro. San Pedro um, is coming up as well. That's in California. So there could be a connection there. We have Reese, so Reese Witherspoon, and I'm getting Reese's Pieces, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. There could be some kind of a, like a peanut, um, if somebody loves peanuts, or maybe there's even like a peanut allergy or something like that. But Reese Witherspoon, um, Reese is also coming through for the the guy in the name, uh, the name of the guy in the Terminator, you know, um, it's the human that guy that comes back to basically save Sarah Connor and keep her alive in the first uh, movie. So Reese, that's Terminator's coming through. Terminator 1, 80s, 80s. Yeah, the 80s era is coming through here. And we have Hugh, I think, Hugh Grant, Hugh Hefner, Hugh Jackson, Jackman, I think. Yeah, Hugh Jackman. So there's a few Hughes here that are coming through. Hugh, uh, Hugh Grant, I think. Hugh Grant, yeah. So maybe somebody from like the UK or I think that's where he's from unless I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so that's what we have so far. But remember, you guys, these right here could be people that are connected to your particular person. So let's just go ahead and get a couple of initials just in case nothing resonated there. We're going to consult my bag and just see what wants to come through. All right, let's see. All right. I'm seeing Logan immediately. Logan. That's somebody's name. 
I'm seeing Lord. So maybe um, somebody is, you know, like my Lord, my Savior, you know, Christianity or something like that. Um, I just am seeing log in for some reason. So this could be somebody that has to log into a computer or they have to log into something. Um, but we have Lord. So uh, maybe somebody with the, the last name Lord. I am also getting Lourdes. And I believe that Madonna's daughter's name is Lourdes. And so there could be like a connection again, um, 80s pop, 80s singer, even though we don't have an F here, I'm seeing Florida. So I'm seeing the state Florida. So there could be some kind of significance um, with that. Again, you guys can take all of these and put these together. Um, I'm getting lead. Um, interesting Lita. I'm getting Lita Ford, also another 80s, kind of like a hair band 80s metal. Um, Jen, somebody could really like uh, drinks like Jen, Jen and tonic, something. Not a lot of people like that drink, but this individual could, you know, they, they really like that kind of drink. I'm also getting Rhoda. So um, the name Rhoda, it's not how you spell it, but it would be R-H-O-D-A, Rhoda. I'm getting Dan. Yeah, I'm getting Dan. I'm getting Dare, so somebody who's very daring. I'm also getting Darren. Um, I'm getting, uh, let's see, uh, Drain. Somebody could be a plumber or connected to somebody that is a plumber. I'm also getting the band Lords of Acid, so that could be something there too. I'm getting oars and a boat or somebody likes to, you know, um, like they, they like their boat or that's how they get their exercise. Yeah. Did I already say lead? Somebody might be like um, a lead in a play, a lead in a band, or they're just a leader. Mm -hmm. We also have role. They've, this person's had many roles, but we also have rule and lord, lording over others, ruling over others. There could be something where somebody's very dominant here. We also have dear, so it could be maybe a terms of endearment. This person used to call you dear. Uh, we also have rude. They could be seen as very rude as well. Yeah. So there's a lot. I could just keep going. I could just keep going freaking days. But you know what? We don't have for that, right? So anyways, go ahead and take a look at these letters. And maybe there is something in here for you guys that you see that I don't see. And if you guys want to uh, put them in the uh, comment section for other people to also see what you see, that would be awesome. I just saw Luda as well. The name Luda. Yeah. Yeah. Luda. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, so now let's continue. We're gonna see what are some of these this person's traits. So let's go into zodiac sign. Just because this one zodiac sign comes through doesn't mean this person has to be the zodiac sign. They just might have traits. Let's see what wants to come through. Ooh, we have Scorpio, okay? So maybe somebody that was born in the month of October or November, um, but the Scorpio energy is definitely like a water sign. It says this energy is very intense, masterful, thoughtful, and magnetically charming, but also secretive and possessive. So remember I said Lord, Lords over others, maybe even coming across as, you know, a little too intense, um, you know, very uh, brash, is that? I don't know if that's the right word, um, but Scorpio energy is definitely very intense. Could be somebody who is secretively like kind of holds secrets. Um, they might be into, you know, just kind of mystical, magical things as well. Yeah, there's something there. Okay, and I believe that this is Capricorn's energy. Yeah, Capricorn. So Scorpio and Capricorn. So we've got some water and we also have some earth. So um, material possessions and maybe material things are very important to this person. Maybe they're, they're really flashy. They drive a really nice car. Nothing wrong with that. They might like to really, um, you know, dress very snazzy. Maybe name brands are very important to this individual. It might be that work and career is this, it's like this person's life. Their achievements are what really makes them stand out. It makes them feel really good. Uh, so I feel like this um, individual, it's like they, they want depth, but in a way it might be that it, it, it's to me, it's like this person struggles in the material world. It's like the, the face that they show the outside world is that they're, they're strong and they're independent, which they are. Um, but like they don't need anyone deep down inside. It's almost like this person has a side of themselves that's very mysterious and maybe even a little dark and they are afraid sometimes to bring that out or that somebody's not going to be able to match that or other people aren't going to accept this person if they let that side of themselves out. So you could be dealing with an individual that's, you know, got kind of got a dark side that they feel 
you know, afraid, I guess, to uh, open themselves up with other people. Okay, let's see what else. So Capricorn is Saturn and then Scorpio, Pluto, and then we have the moon. Ooh, so the moon is Cancer, right? So we've got uh, two watery energies. This is about sensitivity, though. Somebody could also have like a moon sign. So maybe not their sun sign, but their moon is in Scorpio or Capricorn as well. Uh, but this moon energy is somebody who's very deep, somebody who could even be a little moody. It may be that they're very close to their family or they have a very small circle of friends. They don't let many people in. And it might even be that this individual is responsible for family members financially. They're taking care of a family member or they're responsible. They're at the head of their family taking care of things. So that could be something significantly tied to this person. All right, let's go ahead and continue. Who else is this person? How else can we identify this individual? Let's look. interesting we have departed loved ones it's so funny whenever i use this deck this card seems to come out a lot i mean usually everyone has lost someone but there could be a very specific uh like a very specific big influence in this person's life where they lost like you know, somebody that were, they were extremely close to, like a sibling or a mother, like a parent, or maybe even a grandparent that they were close to, or just a very dear friend. But this individual, I feel, um, ha was close to someone and they lost them. And it has made a huge impact on this individual's life. So you would know that this is the person that, you know, is coming through the reading based on this detail. We have gift. Somebody could be gifted, right? Somebody might get vis like visitations or they might um, get signs from this departed loved one. They may have shared this with you. For others, I feel like this departed loved one gave them a gift, maybe an inheritance, a piece of property or something. And this individual has done something, you know, with that particular um you know, just money. Um, but even if it wasn't actual money or an inheritance, it could just be something that was handed down to them from this departed loved one. So it's another identifying trait. With celebrity, interesting. Somebody might be well known in their community. Somebody might be um, kind of very uh, popular on the internet, you know, like internet famous. This could be somebody who stands out in the field that they are, um, you know, like they're, it's like they're in a very competitive field and this person really stands out. It might even be that they look like a particular celebrity and that's why this is coming through too, saying, oh yeah, this, you know, this, this person looks like I'm just making it up, Brad Pitt, right? And that's how you're going to know that this is the person that's coming through. All right, what else? Ooh, we have martyr. Interesting. You know, immediately the sign Virgo came up when I just saw martyr. Um, that's not to say like that's a bad thing, but sometimes Virgos, you know, like they're of service. They they um, are to me like very like humanitarians, where uh, they like to be of service of others. Their purpose, their mission is to I feel serve in some way. At least that's you know how they feel. And um, but sometimes if you know, things don't go right or they're not getting the results or something like that. It can turn into that martyr, like negative shadow aspect. So this individual might be somebody who likes to be of service or serve a particular cause. Maybe they've even helped you out in some way. We have vampire. Interesting. Ooh. So the Scorpio energy is coming to me now, you know, just the darker side of Scorpio. I feel like this person can be very hidden. Um, they can hold, they can, um, like a vampire, like hide, you know, a vampire won't come out during the day, right? The sunlight, all this other stuff. So they remain very hidden. Vampires, you know, in stories and stuff like, you know, they hide their identity. So I do feel like this vampire energy is your person being very secretive. That's what spirit's at least showing me right now. It's the secretive side of this vampire. It's not really that this person is vampiric as in they're sucking you dry sucking your energy even though that could have been the case they may also look like a vampire i did mention robert pattinson and obviously he played edward in twilight so there could be some kind of like and also brad pitt so that's kind of weird to me brad pitt and robert pattinson came through and they both played vampires twilight series and interview with a vampire brad pitt that's funny <laughs> so there could be some kind of a your person looks like a vampire or there's something about them that's kind of like a vampire i don't know all right, let's see what else. 
We have engineers, so somebody could be extremely intelligent, extremely smart, somebody who is able to basically, you know, um, figure things out, just very either mathematical or very mechanical or whatever. They have like this engineering type of mind. So yeah, this could be somebody who went to school, got a certificate to do something, a degree, and now they are working in a career where they're able to really shine or like showcase these particular skills. Okay. All right, let's see what else. Seven of Cups. This is a dreamer. This always reminds me of Pisces. This is somebody who is very creative, somebody that has perhaps a lot of things in front of them. They have a lot of dreams. They might be a little scattered. They might be a little unrealistic. They could be a, like a dreamer and not really, um, you know, a doer. But I'm actually getting this person is pretty... Uh, either pretty well off in the material world or they've got their career and finances in order or they're doing something that they love to do. So I don't really feel like this person is lost per se, but I just feel like maybe they just have a lot of things that they want to do. So sometimes they can feel a little scattered or... Um, yeah, maybe a little flaky and unreliable. Or maybe it's kind of like their their expectations are very high and not a lot of people can meet those expectations is what I'm seeing. Now, Seven of Cups can also mean that we have a lot of choices. So if this person is like a very good looking person and they're kind of like a celebrity, they may have a um, slew of people around them that are admirers that they can choose from. So this person might have a very large uh, kind of social group or social life. They have a lot of choices, perhaps. Ooh, we have a Three of Swords, though. This person actually could have hurt you in the past. That might be, like, if you have a past with this person, it could be that it's now we're identifying that there's maybe a history. For some of you, not all of you, maybe you do feel like this individual came in, took a bite out of you, and then spit you out, you know, drained you of your energy, you know, showed you the world, showed you a fantasy side of themselves, but then broke your heart, maybe a third-party situation. But Three of Swords is definitely heartbreaker. So this individual could be a heartbreaker, as in they, they know that they're good-looking, they know that they have all these options and maybe they just leave a string a string of broken hearts behind them like a player type vibe and we have the hierophant which right here is taurus energy so you know to me the fact that we have the capricorn and we have the, the taurus vibe here i definitely feel like money and finances in the material world are very important to this person but they do have this side of them that's very uh, deep with the moon and Scorpio's energy. It's very deep and it's very dark, but they might hide it. They might not be comfortable with it. Who they show to the outer world or what they're showing the outside, that seems to be together. But what's going on the inside, there might be some issues. There might be some heartbreaks. There might be some things that are, you know, kind of they're lost in, on the inside, basically. But on the outside, you might not know this. Their family could be very important to them with the Hierophant. Their spiritual beliefs might be very important to them. They might have a like a specific set of spiritual practices that they do every single day. There could be a certain religion that's tied to them. We did get the Lord energy. So there could be like a Christian vibe here, or it could just be somebody who is just spiritual and maybe they like to meditate. Maybe they're working on themselves or self-reflective, but the Hierophant is also someone where, um, you know, Taurus vibes, they, they value things. Um, they like to indulge. They like to enjoy their life. They like to enjoy the finer things in life. They like beautiful things. And I feel like that's who this person is. So, Hopefully that sounds like somebody that you guys know or somebody that you guys can identify with. So anyways, let's go ahead and continue. We're going to see why are you on this person's mind? What's the deal? Why are you on their mind? Who can't get you off their mind? Why are you on this person's mind? Interesting. Third person. Uh, envy, jealousy, the desired partner isn't free competition. Okay. This is not going to be for all of you, but one of the reasons why you might be on this person's mind is because they can't have you. Maybe they have looked you up. Maybe this is a past person and maybe they've looked you up on, online to see what you're up to and they see that uh, you're taken. They see that you've got somebody else or maybe they're seeing that you're dating a lot and that you've got a lot of people around you too, that there is something that uh, there's like a competitive vibe here. This could also be somebody where, um, you know, why are you on this person's mind? It could be that they are thinking about that past betrayal. They're thinking about something, a third party situation, because it does say third person. And sometimes that three of swords is heartache over a uh, kind of a lover's triangle third party situation. So that might be another reason why they're thinking about this, uh, thinking about you is because they're thinking about how you guys maybe once butted heads or how things went awry. If you have history with this person or there was a falling out. 
or the king of pentacles interesting but you know it's like the king of pentacles um are they in their are they, are they like crying over this are they sad about it i feel like the, the king of pentacles again is taurus energy so we have taurus coming up again do you see this I know that's a, like maybe just a dog, but to me that reminds me of a wolf. Lone wolf. I'm a lone wolf. This guy, he's older. He's got you know the, the, the gray hair. He's aged. As this person has aged, this could be somebody who is older now. And as they've gotten older, they're really reflecting on their life and they're really, really reflecting on what they could have had. And, but I just feel like it's in, in a sense, it's a, it's a physical thing. You know, why are you on this person's mind? It could be that, you know, maybe they're looking at you and they like what they see. They're attracted to it. They think that you would be a, a good partner for them by their by their side in this maybe lonely stage of their life. Maybe they realize that all the play, like they've gotten all the playing out of their system and maybe they're kind of looking to settle down and have a family. That could be why they are starting to think about you or maybe they're just looking at you and thinking hey you would be an ideal partner for me even if there is no history here oh interesting we have dual souls this is an unconditional love opposites attract two souls one unit on and off relationship hard lessons wow um i have to say you guys that you probably for most of you watching this video know this person you have some sort of uh, past or a history with them you guys maybe have already had like an on and off relationship or you're, you know, you're not speaking or something, maybe which is why you're consulting this reading. Um, it's going to be different for everybody, but this right here tells me that there's already some kind of an established connection on a soul level. Like there's a soul connection here and I feel like they still feel it. Um, we have the moon and we have the sun. So to me, that's masculine and feminine energy. So to me, and this is funny because usually in, um, like in my charms kit, if whenever I see the buck, that reminds me of the masculine. So yeah, there's a masculine vibe here. And this masculine is putting the hands over the eyes of the moon. Moon is feminine energy. We just saw the moon. And um, it's kind of like you don't know that they're thinking about you. You don't know that they have something that they want to say. Maybe you don't even see this person coming, but they are thinking about what they can perhaps offer you or present to you in the physical world. Maybe they're coming out of this this uh, mindset of just being a loner their entire life. Maybe they're starting to think about a partner and that's where you come in because they're thinking about your past connection, um, something like that. So let's see what else. Ooh, very curious about you, you guys. I feel like this person is, is curious enough to look, up, look you up online and see what you're up to. The Page of Wands is very curious. They're intrigued. They're still attracted. They still have some sort of flame going for you. So why are they thinking about you? They're kind of thinking about maybe the past. They're nostalgic on when the two of you were either younger or dealing with each other in a past tense. And it was maybe exciting. Maybe you guys had a very thrilling time. There was a lot of physical chemistry, a lot of attraction, a lot of fire between the two of you, right? So I feel like um, that's probably why this individual is thinking about you and why you're on their mind. They're kind of thinking, you know, where you're at, what you've got going on, what you've been up to, um, how things have gone for you, and maybe to see is there any competition for you. Just kind of assessing the situation is what I'm getting with that. Okay. But this person, it's like opposites attract, right? Opposites attract. It may be that you guys are so different, but they're still attracted to you. They still feel this like, you know, magnetic pull towards you. With the church, interesting. So the church is kind of like the Hierophant to me. The Hierophant is religious um, establishments sometimes or religious leaders, um, our belief systems. So the fact that the church is coming through, it's kind of interesting to me. Um, there's something that has happened in your person's belief system. It does say spiritual awakening here, spiritual awakening. So there's some ascension that's taken place. There's some sort of a, of a shift, maybe a, like a paradigm shift or something that's taken place for your person, but definitely a spiritual awakening. So because they've had the spiritual awakening, it might be that now they're thinking of you and your connection, um, in a different way. They're seeing things in a different light. Maybe they're thinking, hey, I'd like to give this another go. I'd like to give this another shot. That's what I'm seeing. I definitely feel like for a lot of you, this is somebody from your past. 
With the three of pentacles, yeah. How could we work things through? How could we come together and collaborate? How could we meet up in the material world? This is my material world card. Let me actually see you, feel you, touch you, talk to you. You know, see you with my own eyes, um, not just a conversation over the phone. So I do feel like your person is thinking about how the two of you can perhaps work things out, come together, be together, work together, just connect in some way. Ooh, interesting. Ooh, your person is actually seeking some sort of an answer, okay? They're seeking some sort of an answer here. Um, they want to know something. They have a question for you. It might be, could we work it through? Would you accept my apology if there has been hurt in the past? The only reason I'm saying that is because the Three of Swords was here. Heartbreaker. Maybe this person broke your heart. Heart. Maybe there was a lover's triangle before. Um, it might be that maybe they um, are ready for a commitment now and they weren't before. But they want to get some sort of an answer from you. They want to ask you a question. And you're the only one that can really give them that clarity. They have to come towards you in the physical world, whether that be through a message or a phone call or saying, hey, let's meet up to get this clarity from you. So I do feel like they're very curious about something, how you feel, where you're at, is it possible, etc. Hmm. Okay. Hey, with the emperor. Interesting. Aries energy. That's masculine energy. I feel like this is a masculine you guys are dealing with. This is a masculine vibe that I'm picking up on. And this person is kind of coming in with their boss energy and their more mature energy. Maybe the last time you dealt with this person, they weren't necessarily um, in this position. But do you see how he is holding a chess piece? This is about somebody that wants to make a move towards you. So they're thinking about making a move towards you. They're thinking about um, presenting a question to you, asking you something. So I feel like this is something that's on their mind heavily and they're thinking about it. We have the caring woman. Okay, I feel like they see you as the caring woman. They see you as somebody who's extremely caring, somebody who maybe is very deep, somebody that didn't deserve some sort of mistreatment, if that's the story, um, somebody that they definitely have some sort of deep emotions for. I'll read it. Understanding. You're very understanding. They have a lot of harmony with you. Romance, infatuation, goodwill, deep emotions. You're a very deep person. And again, remember, there's that part of them that's very deep with that Scorpio vibe, but maybe they weren't so comfortable sharing that deep side with you before, but maybe after some um, healing and growth and maturing and ascension, maybe that's what they're ready for now. Maybe they just haven't really found that. And so they're reflecting on someone that they once had a deep connection with. And I feel like that's you. Hmm. Okay. Well, we got crying cats at the door. All right. Five of wands. Okay. So five of wands is that uh, competition card and we just got it actually. So there's some sort of like a competition vibe here. There's a competition for your love. There's something that's in the way. It's difficult. Now, that difficulty could just be your history. The difficulty might be getting over this thing that happened between the two of you. But there's competition. And they would have to kind of fight in a way or really show up like a boss and make a pretty dominant move towards you in order to get your attention. So this person's really thinking about trying to get your attention in some way by making a big, bold move towards you. And it have to be, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the a bomb, right? Like bombshell. This is going to really shock you, I feel. And they know this. They know that this move that they make towards you is like, I don't mean to drop a bomb in your life. I don't mean to like create a total tower moment in your life, but here it is. Here I am. I feel like it's a blast from the past bomb. I really do anger, rage, disappointment, betrayal, destruction, the end, negative incident. You guys haven't had a negative incident with this person. So it's heavily on their mind, the challenge that you guys had and how things maybe ended between the two of you. You are a really caring person, perhaps a caring feminine. You didn't really deserve, I mean, no one deserves this, but you didn't deserve what they dished out. And I feel like this is someone who may want to apologize or maybe even make some wrongs right um, towards you. So I feel for the majority of you guys, if you're resonating with these messages so far, that this is probably somebody that you have history with and that maybe you had a falling out with. And maybe for some of you guys, it's just this whole like, it's hard to get to know you because maybe you have a lot of stuff going on. But I, I really feel more it's somebody that you have established history with. So 
that's what I have so far. I hope that that makes sense, but I feel like you guys have had a falling out with this person and why you are on their mind is because they're thinking about everything that went down and everything that they would like to do in order to rectify this. And basically they have that kind of curiosity, like they, they'd like to know, would you be open to that? That's what I'm seeing for today's reading with who can't get you off their mind. So anyways, we're going to dive into the extended into some deeper messages if you're interested. So I'll put the link in the description box as well as pin it to the top comment in the comment section. But what do they see when they look at you? Okay. Then what are their true feelings for you? Also, what do they fantasize happening between the two of you and last their next plan of action when it comes to you? All right, you guys, that's what I have. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and uh, maybe comment in the comment section Tell me what you thought of this reading. I really appreciate it, you guys. All right, take care. Bye-bye.